When you have that first child, you are oblivious to the chain of events that you have put into motion. And during the following years of motherhood, a whole new different and changing world emerges. You can never return to the person you were before, as your life no longer belongs to you. And when you have your midlife crisis, you will get lost looking for yourself. Welcome to Domestic Engineering. For the fortunate few who don't already know, a domestic engineer is someone who has studied the art of housekeeping. This falls hand in hand with starting a family. That first child that turns into a second and then a third. I look after three teenagers and a husband. Oh, and occasionally my brother-in-law Kevin. After a while I thought, fuck it, I ain't gonna work for no one else, I work for myself. So I started bringing in loads of gear for myself. What I used to do is take the stuff in out of the seats, put a load of nine bottles in the seats. At the end of the day, what could I do? I made so much money, it was unbelievable. I had money coming out of my arsehole, really. That's what I said. But I give it all up. I moved back to South London, become a caretaker in a block of flats. But do you know what I say? I'm happy. My name is Caroline, and I'm a domestic engineer. The different chores that are involved within this job role makes me a seasoned multitasker, which means I can iron, drink, yeah. eat, and watch the telly at the same time. Every Wednesday between 2 and 9 o'clock, I attend a local college where I'm studying photography. It is in these few hours that I can shake off the responsibility of being a sanitation specialist. OK, so now today we're going to be talking about lighting ratios. Okay. And in particular, we're going to be talking about the inverse square law and the effect of that. You see, the truth is, I've always been fascinated with photographs and yearned to be a photographer. But like most domestic engineers before me, I've never had the time or the self-belief. Photographs for me are a demonstration of freezing in time, something that's essence and spirit cannot be drawn or described in words. An expression of beauty and emotion that can only be captured unconsciously. I have perfected the technique of dealing with this unforgiving rotor of jewels. I do a lot of ironing. During the hours my body sleeps, my mind awakes to a world that is beyond my reach during the day. It is in these hours that I am truly awake and alive. <coughs> I read somewhere once that when you sleep, your subconscious runs riot. I believe this to be true, for it's during this time that I am totally inspired and complete. I've never liked cooking, and it's never liked me. Unfortunately, it is a task that cannot be avoided for weeks at a time, unlike the ironing. It's like I said, throughout the hours of darkness, while others sleep, my mind is on another plane, and in my slumber is where the concepts for my photographs are born. Someone whispering in my ear, forcing me to delve into the depths of my imagination. The birth of an idea is not always a quiet event. At college, my ideas are not always received with understanding. What's this pit? 
What on earth do you want to do a cesspit for? If the lighting's right, it'll look great. We better add do. Trust me, it'll look fantastic. So what is my secret to making the chores bearable? Well, while you can take your mind to another world, a mountain of vining can be easily climbed. Control over the conscious mind is a craft that I have perfected and being able to shift between parallel worlds of reality and freedom is an art that I have come to embrace. Just think, a world where you are free to wander unhindered by the chains of life. When you catch a glimpse of something that is of such natural beauty that you want to stop it in time and live in that frozen space for eternity. When the day comes to an end and the chores are still there, all I need to do to get away from it all is... <sighs> no. What on earth? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs>